So today we're in mid-January and I thought we might just talk about one of the most exciting plants that's out in flower at this very early stage in the year. It's a drab overcast day, but the plant I'm looking at here is in no way drab or overcast. This is one of the Daphne Boholoas, and in this case we're looking at Daphne Bohola Jacqueline Postil. Now these are very quick growing but quite short lived plants. Some of the forms of Daphne Bohola are evergreen like this one and some are much more deciduous. But they have a number of characteristics in common and the first is that they grow best in semi-shade. These are plants which dislike being planted out in full sun. If you grow them in partial shade and keep their roots shaded, uh, they'll grow very quickly indeed. And here we're looking at a plant which is 15 foot tall after only about seven years. The other thing you have to remember about these Daphne Boholas is that they um, dislike all forms of fertilizer intensely so you must never give them any proprietary fertilizer they often do best in really quite poor soil conditions rather than very rich ones and that's a mistake that a lot of people make in trying to grow these Daphnes. This looks a tremendously robust and healthy plant um, but actually it's quite short-lived. Uh, most of your Daphnes will grow exponentially but their lifespan is extremely limited and 15 to 20 years at the most. Another plant we're going to look at in a moment is that age. This is only five to seven years old and look what it's achieved. But the reason for growing these harbingers of spring, if you like to call them that, is not just for their extremely beautiful flowers, but really it's for the enormous scent which they produce, which sitting as this does outside the side door. Everyone who comes in and out stops and sniffs and says, goodness, there's something really quite exciting uh, uh, growing out here. And those of you who, who don't know Daphne Bohola uh, were in for a treat to discover something as scented as this at this rather drab time of the year. Now Daphne Bohola comes in a number of different forms. We've mentioned that they can be evergreen or semi-evergreen. <coughs> Jacqueline Postel, which this one is, you know, is pink in bud and then opens out and becomes much more white. And there is considerable colour variation in some of the other forms of Daphne Bohola, as we'll see now. Growing here against the wall is Daphne Bohola Darjeeling and this is a little bit further out than the Jacqueline Postel we saw a moment ago um, and the flowers are perhaps a bit, little bit darker uh, in bud and the flower shape is slightly different, they, they open out flatter but in the many forms of Daphne Bohola um, you will find that a number of them are really quite similar um, and this one is fairly similar but it's, it is in its own way distinct and this too is an evergreen. But if we look at this little one here which is just coming out, the first thing we notice is that there's quite a bit of leaf drop and this is Daphne Bohola Limpsfield and it's semi evergreen so in a normal winter this might well lose all its leaves um, and still be flowering away as a leafless uh, shrub. Obviously we've had a very mild winter up to now despite a few days cold last week uh, which has probably caused the leaf drop um, but this one is either evergreen or semi evergreen. You can see that the flower shape is more star like uh, again you've got a, a pink in bud opening to much more white but Limpsfield is certainly 
different from the other two that we've seen, just as beautiful and just as scented in mid-January. These two are a different form of Daphne Bohola again, and they've been in pots for about the last two and a half years. And I think now that they've probably got too big for their pots, and once they finish flowering, they'll need to be planted out in the garden, given a good stake and allowed to get on with it. You can see that this one is showing just a little bit of sign that it's, it, it's a bit chloritic and leaves are going slightly yellow. So it's time it was planted out. It's used up all the energy in this pot. But anyway, this is the, to my mind, my favorite of the Daphne Bohola varieties. And unfortunately, it isn't quite out yet. This is Daphne Bohola Mary Rose, which is the darkest purple and the largest flower of any of the Daphne Boholas. You can just see the purple uh, buds emerging there. And although they will fade a bit in color, they will stay much more purple uh, than, they, than, than white. And this is an enormous, enormous flower, Daphne Bohola, um, and one of the rarest. Um, it's only occasionally available from Bernkou's Nurseries on our website, and when it is, it gets snapped up very quickly indeed. These Daphnes are expensive plants because these rarer varieties are very difficult to get going from cuttings and they're very slow to get away with lots of casualties. So actually they're better off grafted. And you can see if you look at the base of this plant down here, you can see where the graft has taken place. Um, and that may be unusual for Daphne's to be considered something for grafting, but it is a way of increasing the numbers and propagation of this, this very rare plant. When you're trying to grow Daphnes in a pot, they hate being waterlogged and they will die on you for a pastime in the nursery. And one of the best tricks in growing Daphne Bohola varieties is to wait until they've formed a good potful before you pot them on, only pot them on one small stage at a time. Never put them from a one litre pot into a three litre pot. Never try and jump them too quickly into too much soil. They, they don't like that. And the best trick of all is when you have them in your greenhouse or in your nursery when you're growing them on, put the pot inside another pot. Now that sounds a bit strange, but I mean another pot of more or less the same size or perhaps slightly larger. And what that means is that the pot is not sitting on a damp surface, but there is some air and better drainage around the, the bottom of the plant. And that seems to be one of those little old wives' tales that really does do the trick in helping you propagate more Daphne Boholas. But now I just want to take you and show you our old original plant here, which has been the stock plant for many of the Daphnes which we propagated at Burn Coos. And we'll now go to another shady and out of the way spot to look at yet another variety of Daphne Bohola. So I'm now standing behind, or beside rather, the doyen of all our Daphne Bohola plants. And this is just the simple and straightforward Daphne Bohola alba. The flowers are pure white and quite small and uh, as they first come out a bit star-like, although they'll open out more. And this old plant has survived for much longer than most normal Daphne Bohola varieties do. It's about 25 or 30 years old and it's growing behind a wall so its roots are in full shade. If we look up at the top of the plant we see that it's suffered some dieback and it's looking pretty tired and old towards the top. Although lower down, we've got some fairly decent uh, new growth forming. When you look at the size of the trunk, this is really quite a sizable shrub. But as I say, I think it'll probably be on its last legs now, apart from where it's been pruned back a little bit to encourage some new growth. 
But as we stand here, the scent of this plant, which as you can see is by no means fully out yet, is quite breathtaking on a still overcast day. I can't really think of anything better to plant in a pot or to plant near your front door to cheer you up in the midst of yet another lockdown than to come outside and smell the gorgeous scent of Daphne Bohola. Difficult to grow, awkward, prone to dying, but when they perform, absolutely exceptional.